fertilizers come in these containers, which is why we adapt them to the brewer. Uh, the brewer itself is made of food grade stainless steel and it has a very long life. Uh, it should be good for thousands of brews. Um, we have a, an aeration pump that's connected to a diffuser and to a compost tea bag. Um, this valve controls the diffuser and the compost tea ba bag, how much air comes through the system. Um, when we're using chlorinated water, we want to blow the chlorine off the water, which takes 45 minutes to an hour of air diffusion, oxygen diffusion through the water. Um, we turn off the tea bag during that process so we get a maximum oxygen through the, through the brewer. Once the chlorine has been blown off the, the water, then we add uh, six to eight liters of compost to the tea bag. And this tea bag is quite easily taken on and off. It's just a camlock fitting. And then once the compost is in the tea bag, we turn the valve back on so that the air diffuses through the tea bag and through the diffuser equally through the brewing process. So we're going to maintain aeration as this uh, uh, compost tea brewer pulls all of the organisms out of the compost. And it's really critical that we have aeration in and through that compost during the whole brew cycle because we've got to extract the organisms off of that compost as well as the food that is in the compost into the water. We've got to maintain that aeration the whole entire time. We're going to allow the organisms in that tea or in that compost to grow through a 24-hour tea brewing cycle. We're going to add foods into the tea depending on what kind of organisms we want to grow. So we may need to grow fungi, so we're going to put some very specific fungal foods into the tea brew. We may want to grow more bacteria, so we'll be putting specific bacterial foods. It depends on what your soil needs. It depends on what the leaf surfaces of your plants might need, whether they need fungi or bacteria or a balance of both. So we're going to add into the tea brew the foods. The more foods that you put into this tea brew, the more careful you have to be because the organisms grow on those foods. The faster the organisms grow, the warmer it is, the faster the organisms grow, and the more oxygen they're going to utilize. If you put too much food in, relative to the amount of aeration that's going on, you can drive the tea brew anaerobic and then you lose your beneficial fungi, you lose your beneficial nematodes, you lose your beneficial uh, protozoa, you are going to be making some very nasty products that could potentially kill your plants. So we don't want this going anaerobic. We don't want oxygen to drop below about six parts per million oxygen. And that's where this aeration system that Paul's talking about is so important that we're maintaining that oxygen relative to the amount of food, relative to the amount of compost. We use bioactive compost and all our compost is tested by soil food web laboratories so that we ensure that the microbes are in the compost in the first place. And then Soil Food Web Laboratories test the brewer extraction levels to make sure the microbes are in the solution before we add foods to it. So we know we're starting from a good solid place. So the steps that we're going to go through in making a tea brew is to make certain that we've got a good machine that's capable of doing the extraction of the organisms out of the compost into the water that the water can be aerated before you put any of the organisms in, before any of the compost goes into the system. So fill it up, do the aeration of the water in a 250 liter or a thousand liter brewer like this one. We are going to have to be aerating at a high rate for 45 minutes to an hour before you put any of the biology in here. We must blow off the chlorine and we have to blow off any other gases that could be detrimental to the growth of the microorganisms. We're then going to add in the foods that we think we need to grow the fungi or grow the bacteria. And then the last thing will be to add that compost into the tea brew. We then allow this to brew for 24 hours. This will be taken off and applied out in the field or out um, on leaf surfaces using different kinds of sprayers. You must test the sprayer, make sure the sprayer is not harming the organisms either make certain that the organisms arrive in the soil intact, capable of doing their job in the soil or on the leaf surfaces. We test all the pumps we use and we test the transfer pumps and the sprayer pumps to ensure that none of the pumps are killing the microbes in the, in the uh, application process. 
So that's this tea brewer. Let's move over here and take a look at another tea brewer just to give you some idea of the uh, differences in designs. So we have the same flow of air aeration through this system. The difference in this system is that we actually have a different tea bag set up. The tea bag here actually hangs into the solution of water and the bubbling and aeration process extracts the microbes from the compost. Uh, this is a very sturdy, long life tank and is designed to be easy to clean. So in this particular instance, the aeration is coming from the bottom. So the air comes in through a set of nozzles in the bottom of this tank, bubbles up, and extracts the compost out of the, the organisms out of the compost that's sitting in the bag on the surface of that water. So the water's coming up through, extracting and aerating, and so we get this kind of motion. At the end of the brew cycle, you're going to be pumping out of the bottom of the tank, or in either case, you're going to pump the tea out of the tank into your sprayer or into whatever your application equipment might be. Any of these brewers are considered transportable, and sometimes people buy them as a collective and share the, share the brewers between them. This is the small size tea brewer called a, a kiss brewer. Basically, it's a bucket that you can get from almost any restaurant. Uh, we're going to fill the bucket to about 17 liters worth of water. The pump with the um, extension, uh, we basically just have a PVC pipe that's been put into a swirl, a bung at the end, plugging up the end of the PVC pipe, and then holes put in about every two and a half centimeters. And that fits into the bottom of the bucket. And you want to start the water, you want to start the pump aerating for about an hour before we put any um, compost into the system or any foods. So you get the gases blown off, you get any detrimental material out of, blown out of the water first. Then we have a laundry bag that you'll put about 250 grams of the compost goes into that laundry bag. And you'd like to have something that's a Velcro strip or a zipper to make it really easy to hold that compost in the bag. You might want to put a couple fish floats in there. So the compost bag floats on the surface of the water. You would put in any foods you're going to add, whatever, at the concentrations. Um, and then the compost goes in, turn the aerator on, and this then bubbles and brews for 24 hours. And you've got about 17 liters worth of a compost tea that you can put out in your garden, out on window boxes, and on whatever plants you want to be improving the biology on the leaf surface or around their roots. We probably do want to say a little bit um, cautionary to folks because people take a look at what we've just described. These things don't seem that complex. They don't seem that difficult. But they've all been tested extensively to make certain that they will maintain the oxygen conditions in the tea brewer. There have been a number of people that have tried to do similar things. It looks pretty simple. They put together something that really does not produce a quality aerated compost tea, and they don't get the benefits that we're talking about. And we've seen that over and over again, Paul, haven't you, with all of your other tea brewers? Well, one of the things that we tried, we tried making homemade brewers that, or replicate brewers that we know people have, and then we have them tested with the Soil Food Web Institute, and we find that they're not extracting or growing the microbes, certainly not in the balance that we're looking for, and we're in, often ending up with anaerobic compost teas or anaerobic compounds that people believe are compost teas which are detrimental to your crops and soil. So if you're going down the line of experimentation, please do it scientifically and please have the Soil Food Institute properly test your broods.